Hello, hello. I'm EJ, you're you. Welcome, Timmy Channel. That's right, Timmy. I'm talking to you. Y'all like that new intro? Yeah, I played around in After Effects a little. And today we're gonna play around in side interior designing. That's right, y'all. Instead of speed building, we're speed designing today. Namely, four rooms inside the famous Quadratini Historical Center, aka the house of my second character. Even though this isn't my usual type of video, if you like Animal Crossing and if you like design, why don't you go ahead and paper over that subscribe button, reupholster that like button, and draft some elevations in that comment box, and enjoy. But first, costume change. So we're starting off in the lobby of the History Center by selecting our wallpaper and flooring before moving on to our furniture. So one good tip for when you're placing your furniture is to avoid putting it all on the edges of the room. While this kind of makes, you know, like a big open space in the center, it actually visually shrinks a room. Um, so I'm bisecting this room with these bookcases to avoid that. And as you can see, like it already kind of makes the room feel a little bigger just by splitting into two uh, like quasi rooms, I don't know. Now one thing about me also is that when I have wallpaper like this with the windows on it, I cannot hang anything on the windows. It just drives me crazy because, you know, I just can't help but apply logic to the silly video game. I don't know. Now I'm making this room somewhat symmetrical um, with kind of just like the large pieces of furniture, like the bookcases and the couches. Um, but then in all of the details, uh, it's going to make it asymmetrical to you know, add visual interests or whatever. And this is, you know, I'm envisioning this as like kind of a study and chill room. Like, you know, you can read books about the history of Quadratini and hang out, but there aren't any exhibits or anything hanging out in here because that's for the later rooms. Um, but it's still very like public facing, polished, you know, this isn't someone's like living room. This is a lobby of a building. Yeah. <laughs> Now, one thing to help your rooms feel a little bit more cohesive and sleek and polished, like this room is, uh, is just to make sure that you're matching materials and colors. So in this room, I'm using lots of dark woods in the bookcases and the tables, but I'm also using black metal in like all of the ironwood chairs, the light umbrella stands and stuff like that. Also rugs, I love rugs. They help divide up a space and like, you know, <laughs> look at her, she's just, she's just gorgeous. And obviously because this is a public building and exit sign, we love infrastructure. I'm also trying to make use of a lot of plants, um, just because I think like, you know, greenery makes any room a little bit more inviting. And also the green is a nice contrast against the brown. Um, and then I'm using a screen as a sliding door here because uh, the office is beyond that little hallway. Don't like this rug, bad rug. But speaking of the office, so this back room is the office for Christine, who's the archivist who runs the History Center. Um, so while the lobby was very public facing and polished, this room is going to be kind of more lived in and private and a little messier. So I'm starting off just by placing down basically any furniture that I think I would like. It did get a little crowded, but I, I, I stand behind this method. <laughs> Also, um, I just want to get ahead of this and say that, you know, I know that I just said don't put furniture on just the walls. I am going to do that in this room, so, <laughs> but I'm doing this on purpose, I swear. Um, it's really just to make the room feel a little bit more cluttered and a little tight, you know. Also, of course, I am putting vending machines in here because anyone who has worked retail will tell you that those things are a lifesaver. <laughs> So because this is a private office, unlike in the lobby, which is very public, you know, I'm not trying to match any materials back here or anything like that, because I think it really makes it just look, look a little bit more natural and lived in. And um, just like, you know, this person has bought furniture as they needed it. It wasn't necessarily looking to design a cohesive room like we are in Animal Crossing, you know? 
Also, fun backstory, this player, uh, Christine, was actually based on my roommate back when she didn't have her Switch and couldn't play. I made a character for her, which like, aw, but I really just did it to get the extra house. So, <laughs> um, all that to say, the fragrance diffuser here is a reference to a real fragrance diffuser that she has. Cute. Now I'm just putting some things on the wall, some awards, a fan, a bulletin board. Uh, just, you know, trying to put some things on the wall, not have everything on the floor, you know. <laughs> And now, of course, another rug, which honestly, I think in this room, even more than in the first room, you can see how it makes the room feel a little bigger, even just because it's dividing the space up. But that's two rooms down, y'all. Two to go. This room's going to be unconventional. Um, so the idea here is that this is the natural history of the island Quadratini. And, you know, Christine, our archivist, worked with Blathers to put this together, you know, a little exhibit on local flora and fauna. So, you know, mammoth, there we go. And also, all of the plants, literally like almost every plant I have. <laughs> So TBH, I wasn't too crazy about this floor and wall combo once I put it down, um, but I think that all the plants here do help it look a little less artificial, a little less astroturfy. Um, I might still change it, but you know, I think it turned out, it turned out fine. Obviously I'm putting it on YouTube, so I think it was acceptable. <laughs> Now we're back to a public facing room, so I'm trying to stick to similar materials. Since the mammoth already has this dark wood base, I'm trying to use dark, dark wood with this table, um, and I'm going to pick up on the yellow monstera pot using a sunflower rug later. And the idea of this is I want it to feel very museum-y, so there's a space for activities, a book about butterflies, cushions on the floor, stuff like that. I was also going to try and find a place for these floor lights, but couldn't find one, so yeah, c'est la vie. Um, and lastly, just to give a, you know, I guess live example of fauna, I'm putting down this outdoor table and then I'm going to put a, a little butterfly and a little fish friend on display because nature. But now there's just one more room to go, y'all. So this last room is pretty fun. You know, I've talked in previous videos about wanting to use my island to tell a story in some way. And this room is really going to help with that by being about the history of the island and its founder, Edward Jameson. So I'm putting in this little movie screen to watch a looping film on. I'm using these uh, lecture benches to kind of feel like, you know, it, when you're in a museum, there's, you know, usually places to sit and these feel very like stiff and good for that. <laughs> I'm also going to be putting this painting on the wall, like it's, you know, the painting of the founding of the island or something like that. Oh, I also finally found a good place for this train set. I loved it since I found it, and I think it's a nice little reference to the train bridge area found elsewhere on the island. A little panel door, of course, for privacy. Um, and then in this back corner area, I'm going to put some photos of villagers who have since departed. These were my first villagers. The idea here is that this is, you know, photos of the founding residents of Quadratini. You know, history, right? Now, in general, when hanging things in a line, it's good to use uh, odd numbers. I don't have odd numbers, so I'm going to ignore that rule because I want to put things on top of these bookshelves. Sorry. And then the last thing I'm putting in is a pattern I made using a screenshot from the game to be a little photo of the founder. Cute, right? Bam! Here it is. Here's the final product. You know, when I set out to make this, I really wanted to make a museum that felt like that, you know, like a small town history museum where there's one person that works there who's super knowledgeable about this town's history and super passionate about it. And I think I really, I think it turned out that way. This lobby feels super cozy. I'm glad that I used the falling snow wallpaper in it. I think I love that wallpaper. The office, honestly, like, I would want to work in this office. Well, you know, we'll take that with a grain of salt. I would rather there be a window. Um, but, you know, I enjoy how it looks and I enjoy, uh, you know, the coziness. And I like that it uses a bunch of different colors, unlike the rest of the uh, museum that feels very cohesive. This feels very lived and very natural. I like it. Honestly, y'all, the AstroTurf 
it's growing on me. <laughs> I like this room too, obviously. And I think that this is a great, it feels so different from the rest of the island because the island's covered in snow. This feels so warm and natureful and yeah. And then this last room, I feel like this room really captures the idea of a small town history museum so well. You know, you go into it, there's like four different objects placed around four different random pieces of information and I love that painting on the wall that I did that little pattern I'm proud of that one but listen y'all do I claim to be an interior design expert no but I hope that you guys got something cool out of this got some ideas and some inspiration if you like this video you want to see some more Animal Crossing design videos make sure you hit that subscribe button but that's it y'all so peace